Hi and welcome to this training on editing with Premiere Pro and After Effects from Adobe. My name is Matthijs Klaasner and I am based in Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Being an Adobe Education Leader brings me lots of cool stuff to do, including this training for you. This training is provided by CapEd Credit Union in partnership with the Graaf Lyceum in Rotterdam, that's a school where I teach, and other partners such as Adobe. This training is a resource for teachers and students seeking to develop their creative and production skills in graphic design, video and photography. Your skills and talent can be rewarded by participating in CapEd's annual Movie Trailer Video Contest. This contest is for high school students and more information can be found at capad.com slash movie trailer. Winners of the contest have the opportunity to win cash prizes for themselves, their schools and subscriptions to the Adobe Creative Cloud. For CapEd, it's more than banking, it's making a difference. CapEd's dedication is to help teachers and students to further advance skills, talents and future careers. I encourage teachers and students to use this resource to help you create the career in the visual arts discipline. Good luck with the competition and enjoy making beautiful creative stuff with the Adobe tools. So let's get started. Um, actually we're gonna start with the boring part of this demo. It's boring because well, we're going to organize our files first uh, before we're going to get started with editing. It's best to make a, a, a structure like this, for instance, to get your things uh, uh, started. Um, make a file structure within, uh, within a folder. Um, in that way, Premiere Pro will always be able to find your files and uh, it won't get messed up. Um, so make a folder structure uh, somewhat like this. To get your edits in a folder, your artifacts files in a folder, images, uh, media is the folder where I've got all my uh, video files for this uh, this demo. Uh, in here, uh, music, research, sounds. Um, you can add a, a voiceover folder if you'd like. Uh, make a, a, a structure that's convenient for you, but please do make a structure, um, and then get over to Premiere Pro and make a new project. All your edits that you're going to make within Premiere Pro will be um, placed inside the edits folder in my case. So everything I do in Premiere Pro will end up in the edits folder. So this is a commercial about a bully. Um, this is version 3 already in my case. And I'm going to go to the location um, in my editing folder. And there's edits. Um, so here are all my Premiere Pro files choose and the rest standard options are okay so i hit the okay button and the premiere pro interface starts up and important to know is that this is the workspace of editing in premiere pro cc 2015 so we're going to import our media files which are located in the media folder in my folder system there we go and all these files i'm going to import into premiere pro Premiere Pro is going to run through all the files if there are any errors with, the, with them. Um, probably not in this case. And I've got all my files in the Premiere Pro project bin in the left corner of my uh, interface. Um, and I've got them organized in scene order. So I'm going to start with scene 1. So I'm going to open up scene 1 with the kit. Um, there are two shots with the kit in the frame and several shots of the uh, the toy car uh, which you're going to use. Um, let's have a look at our first opening shot. With a double click on the shot I'm opening up the first uh, video and I think this one is pretty cool. So you can see him playing with the car. Vroom vroom. So let's get his hand out of the frame, make an in point with this mark in button or the eye on your keyboard. Hit the space bar to play again. There we go. Hit the O on the keyboard or the mark out button and drag your video onto the sequence. This makes a sequence with the right aspect ratio, the right 
frames per second uh, and stuff and now we've got two videos uh, one source video and one program monitor this is your output so this is what your video is gonna look like um, so yeah basically that's pretty cool hit the down arrow on the keyboard to go to the end of the sequence and let's have a look for another shot where the kid is playing with the toy so I'm I know this is a little bit chit chat with the director um, so I'm gonna open up this shot double click and let's see where we're gonna start Awesome. There we go. That's awesome. So make an in point again with the I on the keyboard and the O on the keyboard again to get another shot and drag it onto the timeline again. And now we've got already an edit with two shots. There we go. Beautiful. Advanced editing techniques is all about speeding up your workflow. Making an edit as quickly as possible and of course so beautiful as possible. So you need to work with shortcuts. That's really, really important. So for instance, uh, let's take a look at this clip. I'm hitting the spacebar in the sequence to uh, see what it's all about. I've got three clips already and it will stop at the end of the sequence and at this moment I want to search for a clip where the car hits up the driveway and, and stops so I'm hitting the spacebar in this window hitting the L button on the keyboard to speed up the playback L again to make it even faster um, over here it stops so I'm hitting the O button to make an out point but I want to make the in point at the same time so I want to go back a few frames hitting the J button on the keyboard to move backwards there we go I can see the the shadow of the boom of the microphone over here in the display of the source monitor um, so I'm waiting for a moment where the boom leaves the frame hitting the I button to make an in point and now I know that my playhead is over here in the sequence at the end, exactly the same position where I want it to, uh, to be dropped. So I could drag and drop the video over here, but that takes more time. I can use the buttons insert or override um, to do the same thing, um, dropping the video over here. But I could also use the, uh, the shortcuts, for instance the comma, to insert the video over here. The difference between um, insert and override is that when I leave my playhead over here and this is the point where I want to add a little clip and I use the uh, the, the period button, the, the override button, it will override the data that's already in the video track that's been selected. Um, so most of the times that's not that convenient uh, but if you want to override you could use the period button in this case i don't want that to happen so i do a command z hit the down arrow on the keyboard to go the, to the end of the video and uh, take a look for another clip where i see the bully the driver of the car double click to open it and i like him acting like this him being really a bully so I'm hitting the O button to end over here and going backwards with the J spacebar make an in point and hit the comma key again to add the video over here so now I've got this at this moment in time So now I've got a few more shots on my timeline, on my sequence. And in the final shot, I've got the bully driving over the toy car right about here. Um, there we go. And um, at this point, I want to show this little sequence. So I need to insert this crashing of the car um, inside of this pretty long shot. So I want to insert it, so I need to make an in point and an out point, I already did that. 
and uh, need to insert it with a comma key on my keyboard and it will split the existing clip in two move this side of the clip uh, upwards the sequence and it inserts the other clip of course when I would have chosen for overwrite it would overwrite the existing material and not split it in two and move it up but now I only want to have the little bit where the driver stops the car and um, has a, a, a real bully look in the in the camera um, so I don't need him to drive all the way on along the uh, along the driveway and that's not necessary so I need to shorten this clip until the playhead at this moment and therefore I can use some of these other tools um, of course I could use the razor tool cut the clip in two select it and delete the clip and move this part over here that's one of the uh, one of the ways to do it but that's a little bit time consuming um, but it's uh, an easy way to, to do the job but you've always also got the uh, ripple edit tool and the rolling edit tool well the rip it, ripple edit tool does this thing so it, you click on the cut and drag to the playhead let go of the mouse button and it already moves the uh, the rest of the clip towards the cut and there we go and that's a really nice nice way to shorten the clip and move everything aside for instance when I want to shorten this little clip over here and do the same thing drag and drop and it will move the the whole of the existing uh, sequence to the cut so it's really really easy to use these clips instead of uh, shortening it with the black arrow selecting all and moving it until it nicely snaps to the cut the rolling edit which I'm now pointing at um, does a bit of the same thing um, but slightly different um, let's select the cut with the rolling edit I'm gonna zoom out so you can see what the difference is and I'm rolling upwards the clip or downwards like this and it only changes these two clips which I'm selecting at the moment so it will change the final frame of the left clip and the first frame of the right clip but the length of the total of the sequence will stay the same so that's pretty pretty slick at a certain moment in time you always want to have a title and a transition inside of your project probably multiple titles and multiple transitions so let's make it title at first inside of Premiere Pro and we're going to take a look in the next chapter uh, about making a title inside of, uh, of After Effects but let's first make something cool within the editing tool Premiere Pro so let's go for title new title and there are certain uh, flavors you can choose from but let's start with a default still image and uh, nothing moving yet so this is going to be the King Kong title it opens up a new window um, which confuses a lot of people because there's no save option inside of this window but nothing to worry about because when you make a title and you close down your your title window um, your title will be part of your project so you will see your file inside of your project folder so let's first write down King Kong select all the text and there are multiple title properties over here which you can alter or just start with a title style at first there are several title styles you can choose from um, let's see what is something that comes close to what I want to achieve maybe this one um, you can alter the, the, the colors of the gradient later on well, let's have a look uh, let's make a, a linear gradient with a gray tone 
and a more slightly black one. I like the outlines, the strokes around it. The outer strokes are yellowish. Well, let's change the font as well, and all based on the title style that I've chosen at first. Let's make impact. That's a nice one. And now when I close down this uh, this title window, it will show your title over here, King Kong. And now you can select it and drag it onto your timeline. And it's got a default length of 5 seconds, depending on the properties within Premiere Pro. Standard is 5 seconds. And of course you can make it longer or shorter, whatever you'd like, by dragging and dropping the end or the beginning of the title sequence. So that's one thing, King Kong. But maybe I want to uh, let it uh, fade in. Well, I can snap it to the other clip and go to the effects panel. Go to the video transitions. And there are lots of cool uh, video transitions to choose from. Um, the one highlighted in blue is the default one, which we uh, use most often. Well, there are lots of... Uh, nice ones and horrible ones to choose from. Um, let's stick with the cross dissolve. I'm gonna select it and drag it right between those two clips and release it and it will show the transition right over here and it will directly play back in the program monitor and there's King Kong. Pretty cool. Maybe I want to do some animation with this title. So I can use some effect controls, open them up, and the way you animate within uh, Premiere Pro is exactly the same like you would do in uh, After Effects, only a little bit more basic. Um, so let's say it's got a slight zoom in, um, and that's depending on the scale. So I'm gonna highlight, or I'm gonna select the toggle for the animation little stopwatch icon and it will drop a keyframe inside this little uh, mini timeline if you will and I'm gonna let it start from here and go to the end of the timeline of this mini timeline and zoom it or scale it a little bit bigger like this and now you've got this result of course, I can see the title is not really in the middle of the window. I can always open up with a double click the title again, select it with the black arrow, and set it in the center of the screen, like this. There you go. And now I've got a title which is uh, automatically updated within this sequence. So let's make another title. We could also use the new item button over here to make a new sequence, adjustment layer or a title. There we go. It's the same option. Title 2 is Summer 2016. There we go. And I'm going to use this title style. Summer 2016. There we go. Splendid. It's already inside the project bin. Select it. And I'm gonna select another transition like the one uh, dip to black. So it fades out to black. I'm going to change the length of the transition and let's use another transition like a slide. Let's see what that does. There we go. And let's fade it out again with a cross dissolve or a dip to black or whatever you like. So this was a part about making transitions and titles to your sequence. Um, make sure your edit has got some titles and sequences that are uh, really nicely designed um, and uh, really make, uh, make it happen. 
So now let's do some uh, some grading and some color correcting within Premiere Pro. Of course you've got a speed grade installed as well from the Adobe tools uh, which is totally awesome if you want to take it to the next level uh, but Premiere Pro can do a lot of things itself uh, concerning color correcting and color grading so let's have a look uh, on this little edit that I've got over here. You've got the effects, the effects panel, uh, several transitions uh, that you've seen in the uh, previous chapter uh, but there's also video effects and a lot of things are comparable with the things you do in, in Photoshop for instance like altering the levels, the, the contrast, uh, making things black and white a lot of filter effects within Photoshop are here as a video effect as well so a lot of the terminology is the same but I want to do some color correcting and there are a lot of things inside of there as well and a really powerful way to uh, color correct is the three-way color corrector. Well, there are several ways to add such an effect to a clip. You can drag and drop your clip from the effects bin onto your clip in the timeline. There we go. And now it's in the effects controls right underneath all the effects that are already uh, on the clip. Um, the three-way color corrector is added to that list and you can alter the shadows, the midtones and the highlights and a bunch of other stuff uh, way below. So dragging and dropping is one way. I'm going to delete it with the delete key on the keyboard because you can also uh, double click on the clip and it will uh, get your uh, effect on the clip. Um, let's delete it again because the final step to do it is drag and drop it on your effect controls panel. And it will add your color correction over here. So three ways to do the three-way color corrector. But I'm going to do some color correcting. Uh, not only on this clip. But on a bunch of clips. And most of the clips ask for the same type of color correction. Because everything is shot with the same camera on the same day. Uh, so probably need to have the same color correcting all over again on every single shot. When you drag and drop your uh, color corrector on one clip you need to redo the color correcting again and again or copy and paste it again and again and that's a bit time consuming especially when uh, you decide well it needs to be a bit more warmer or more colder uh, on the entire video then you've got a lot of things to do um, so maybe it's better when you've got more clips when you've got multiple clips to work with an adjustment layer on your uh, your video track in your sequence so let's go to the new item from your project bin and there's the adjustment layer. An adjustment layer is basically absolutely nothing except, uh, well it's a clip that you can place on your timeline with the exact uh, expert ratio of your, uh, of your sequence if you don't alter it. Uh, in this case it's OK. And then you can drag and drop it on a video layer on top of the thing that you want to adjust. You can already see that the basic setup is longer than the clip that I want to uh, alter. So I can spin it over multiple clips. And now I can add my uh, color correction on the adjustment layer over here. And it will color correct everything that's underneath. Um, so let's go back to the effects panel again. Uh, double click the three-way color corrector. And it will pop on the uh, selected clip, the adjustment layer in this case. And now we can do some easy color correcting by hitting the master checkbox and start dragging in now the shadows midtones and highlights will all be color corrected in the same color that you want to do so maybe a bit more warm or cold or yeah, whatever type of color correcting you'd like but I think most of the times you want to uh, have a bit more red in the, the shadows for instance and do something different with the midtones and the highlights uh, to get the, the, the right uh, flavor in your uh, uh, in your image so let's deselect master and it will reset all the color wheels and just let's say well we're gonna make the uh, the blacks the the, the shadows the, the dark parts of the video a little bit more blue so it gets more black um, and let's take the, the hit midtones and the highlights to a little bit uh, warmer color more red inside and now when I hide my video layer with the adjustment layer, you can see the difference between both of the clips. So without the adjustment layer, it looks a bit colder. 
uh, it's made more blue inside of the frame and uh, with the adjustment layer everything uh, is a bit warmer is a bit more red-ish um, than before we can do some uh, several other things as well uh, maybe make the blacks a bit more black and the whites more white by um, dragging this little anchor on the input levels a bit more to the right to make black more black and we can do the same thing on the opposite side with the whites make the whites more white so they will pop out a bit more let's take a look at the difference there we go um, we could also um, take a look at the saturation and maybe make a, a, the master saturation a bit more higher so all the bright colors pop out a bit more you can see that the light of the car is getting more orange if you want it to happen um, than before so it highlights it a bit more um, well you have to take a look at all the options that are inside you can do lots of things to get the right color and we'll do the same thing on all the other clips so here before and after before a bit more cold now a bit more warmer it's uh, sunny it's summer there we go and everything is basically the same All the other things that are uh, on top of the uh, three-way color corrector can be animated or altered as well. Uh, maybe you want to, uh, well we are a bit happy with the color correction but maybe it's a bit too intense. And then you can also go to the opacity of this adjustment layer and make it uh, uh, semi-transparent. Like this and now it's not that over the top like before. So that's a good way to temper the adjustment layer a bit. It's especially important when you shoot in raw video. Uh, most of the times you shoot, uh, you will shoot in uh, in raw on your DSLR camera. Uh, then everything will be uh, grayed out. Uh, it will be really flat. So you need to color correct, and a three-way color corrector is a great way to go. So enjoy color correcting. So let's do some green screen magic. Uh, the case in this uh, little demo is that I've got two images, well one uh, green screen video and one image of the lovely state of Idaho. Um, and, uh, uh, and I've got a sequence as well. So the thing is that I want to have uh, this young lady on top of uh, this image and the green screen needs to be transparent. So first of all I need to drag the clip that I want to have on the background of my uh, my video uh, on uh, video 1 in this case and go to the effect controls to position it more properly so I go to motion alter the scale of the image a bit like this and move it a bit aside like that okay and I want to have the young lady over here so I need to drag her on top on a video track 2 and of course you can do the green screen action inside of After Effects uh, which is terribly easy as well um, but when Premiere Pro does the trick why should you go to another uh, piece of software when it can be done right from out the effects panel the video effects keying and there you will find the ultra keyer and that's a really powerful keying option right within your favorite editing tool so click and drag on top of the lady and nothing really happens apart from that the ultra key has been added to the effects inside of the effect controls and right now it's uh, set to default keying on black well that's not the case we've got a nicely lit uh, green screen uh, footage so everything is uh, on a really high quality nicely lit uh, even background so when I click the green pixel over here 
it will magically disappear and everything will be transparent and uh, well you've got a, a really nice picture as, as, as it is so you don't need to alter it when your basic footage is really nicely lit so uh, of course this is really high-end video stuff from my friends at uh, hollywoodcamerawork.com see the link for the footage uh, right below this video of course we can uh, alter the, uh, the options uh, like the matte clean up and stuff uh, when you have less quality of video so for instance when um, you do this trick and you've got still some uh, green edges around the uh, the footage you can choke a little bit of the pixels and I will exaggerate a bit like this so you get a haircut if you will uh, when you do it too, too much um, but it will uh, get rid of the, the green and there is an option to uh, go into the spill suspicion. So when uh, you've got a green reflection on your clothing or on your face or something, um, the spill suspension uh, will get rid of that as well. So uh, the Ultra Keyer is a really, really powerful tool to make keying possible right within your editing tool. Of course, we um, can do some extra things to it like um, moving it aside a bit more uh, not to the top or the bottom but to the side so we can see the sign a bit better of Idaho and it will play back in real time so nothing to worry about so that's the ultra gear really really powerful but when you want to do the trick right within after effects that's possible too so I'm gonna get rid of the ultra gear there's my green screen again and let's uh, reposition her to the basics so we've got two images the background image and the green screen image and I want to right click it and replace the file with the After Effects composition so I'm gonna open After Effects right now uh, it seems like nothing much is happening but After Effects is being started up I get a warning for my Ray Trace 3D and it will ask me to save the After Effects file. Make sure you save your file on the right position on your hard drive. So I'm working for this uh, training uh, for this training series in my cap add folder. So I make sure that my uh, After Effects file is found in there as well. Green screen. Save. So now I've got a green screen uh, file. Um, in widescreen there we go and now it's linked in Premiere Pro to this file um, so I can select my image again my, uh, my video file it's an animated PNG file and there are some keying options as well in here and there we can find the, uh, the key light which is really powerful as well so I'm gonna drag it on top of this layer and select the green color as well and there you go now you've got the same thing inside of this uh, uh, this file now what I can do is um, show you some editing of the text so let's say that this video is all about potatoes we can alter the, the text options uh, right inside of this tool so you've got the character uh, let's make it the Cecilia uh, let's make it a little bit smaller if you will and there we go and we can animate this little type of typography uh, right inside this tool as well so let's open up the layer of potatoes let's go to the transform options and they've got the same uh, stopwatch symbols like you you like you have in uh, Premiere Pro so let's alter the position um, I want to have it in 50 frames at this position so I highlight the stopwatch it gives me a keyframe and now I can drag the potatoes right outside of the framing and now you've got your animation so this is pretty cool let's go a little bit further And copy this frame and paste it again so now you've got a little bit of a bounce at the end there we go really nicely done so I save my file 
and I could quit After Effects if I would, uh, would want to. Go back to After Effects and it immediately will swap my uh, previous two files with the uh, After Effects file. Let's say I want to alter the title again or the green screen. I don't go for replace with After Effects composition now because I already have an After Effects composition. So I need to go for the edit original. That will power up After Effects again with the same file. And I could do uh, some adjustments. Let's say I want to make the title green for whatever reason. Save the file again. Go back to After Effects and it will update immediately. That easy. So two ways to do some keying. And now you know the dynamic link between After Effects and Premiere Pro. Really, really efficient way to work. So now we know that After Effects is really cool. Let's go back to After Effects one more time. So right click the clip uh, that you were working on and then go to uh, Edit Original because this clip is already an After Effects file. Edit Original. It will power up After Effects again. And now I want to go into uh, some 3D action. In order to go 3D, we need to um, make 3D layers. And we uh, will do that by clicking on the 3D layer option right over here. Um, if you don't see those options, that's possible too. You need to toggle switches and modes. And uh, one of the two options will give you the, uh, the option to uh, click on the 3D layer option. So uh, now these are 3D layers and all that's happened is that uh, each layer uh, has got a Z or a Z axis added to it. So you can uh, move uh, layers into depth. Well the easiest way to do that is go to the two views horizontal option. There we go. And now you can see the uh, final result on the right monitor. And on the left view you can see the uh, layers uh, seen from top. So they are really thin. Uh, but when you highlight them in your layer, right from your layers, you can uh, move the Z axis backward like this. And you can use the Z axis for the video file as well. Move it backward like this. Um, and now we can add a camera to see it all working. And a camera is a layer as well. So we're going to go to layer, new camera layer. We're going to stick with the basic settings in the camera dialogs box. There we go. And all it has done is uh, well, added the camera layer and we can see the camera layer from top as well. Right over here. And now when we move the camera aside, you can see some 3D options working. It's a little bit of a, little bit of a parallax feeling, if you will. And we can zoom in a bit more to see... It a bit better and let's reframe it a bit like that and of course you can animate the camera as well with the stopwatch settings uh, uh, way below so maybe we can uh, animate the position of the camera and uh, leave the point of interest for what it is so animate the position Let's nudge it, uh, nudge it aside a bit. And this will give a lovely uh, 3D feeling. Just like this. And this will, uh, will be the result. So pretty cool. But of course it will be cool to make a 3D object as well. Really 3D because this is just uh, some planes arranged in depth. Um, but we can do some 3D actions as well. Uh, but in order to get those 3D options you need to alter your composition settings. So I go to composition settings. Advanced tab. And we need to uh, get rid of uh, classic 3D. And go to ray trace 3D. And that will give some more options for uh, really 3D, uh, a bit of modeling in 3D in, inside of After Effects. 
So when I go to my potatoes layer and I want to get 3D text, I open up my potatoes layer, go to uh, the uh, geometry options and give it a bit of an extrusion like this and that will give you real 3D typography so that's pretty pretty slick there we go and you can see it is a 3D right from the uh, top view as well so uh, when you save your file and go back to Premiere Pro again you will have the updated result pretty cool So I think the final part of After Effects uh, wraps up my demo lesson inside of Premiere Pro and a bit in After Effects. So I'm ready to export my file to a video file and share it with you guys on YouTube. So how do we export a sequence from Premiere Pro to a video file which you can upload elsewhere. So let's go to File and Export and then choose Media. Um, make sure you've got your sequence selected. You can see the blue outline around my uh, sequence at this moment. So this one is selected. When I choose another panel and go to File, Export Media, it will be grayed out. So make sure you've got your sequence selected so you know this is the part that we're going to export. So File, Export Media. There we go. Um, the most popular way to export over the internet right now at this moment in time is the H.264 format. Um, so this is my basic setup for, for exporting to YouTube. If you need to uh, save it uh, in another file for it, please be my guest. Um, I'm going to choose for the H.264 which, uh, which gives you a nice uh, detailed result uh, with a, a minimum amount of MBs or gigabytes. Um, so that's uh, really easy. So that's, in my opinion, the best way to go. And then you can choose your preset. Uh, well, I'm going to upload my file to YouTube. So I'm going to search for a preset, which is a YouTube preset. Um, so I'm going to go for the uh, 1080p HD format on YouTube. There we go. I think the rest of the options is in order. Of course, I'm going to give it a name. Final lesson. Export. And I will save it in my folder. There we go. Save. And that's about it for this uh, for these basic settings. Um, and then you can choose for the option Q or export. You go for Q when you have more things to do right inside Premiere Pro. Um, it will open up the media encoder and uh, will give you an option to uh, render it over there. It will be a bit slower because uh, well the, the the system needs to work with Premiere Pro as well. But it gives you the option to, to continue working. When you choose for export, it will immediately start exporting your file to the MP4 file that I'm willing to make. Um, and uh, until the uh, render is done, you won't be able to use uh, Premiere Pro at that moment. So it's uh, based on how quickly you want to have your results. Uh, either you go for Q, when you've got more things to do, or go for export to do it right now. So I'm going to export the file and wait a while until it's done. And uh, that gives me time to uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you've learned a lot during this uh, training in Premiere Pro. Thank you Cap Ed and Dan Armstrong for giving me this opportunity to teach you guys in Idaho uh, the basics of uh, Premiere Pro and After Effects. And of course uh, thank you uh, editstock.com and hollywoodcamerawork.com for uh, handing me some uh, footage to teach upon. So thank you and bye bye and of course good luck with the competition.